Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Uh, broadcasting from Bella's wonderful studio here in Bulgaria with Terry as well. And so there'll be two artists today. And they both ask for lots of questions. It's really an ad hoc um, session, somewhat like what um, George and Giovanni did. So they're going to show you their favorite colors. They're going to show you some mixes. But the real thing is, what questions do you want to ask two marvelous artists? And so with that, I'd like to introduce both Stella and Teresa. Um, welcome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Thank you very much for being here. We are really excited to have John and Catherine uh, with us and show them um, around and around Bulgaria. We went to the beach today and showed them the longest river in, in Bulgaria. And we had a, a boat trip <laughs> and it was great fun because the captain actually turned to be my my second cousin. <laughs> it was absolutely unexpected and we had great fun. Um, so what we would like to do today is show you uh, some of our favorite colors and we would like you really to have dialogue with us. And, uh, you, instead of doing a full, full demo, we will show you some of our colors and some mixtures. Okay. Oh, the sound is not good. Okay, we may have to switch. Um, Stella, can you help us? Oh, okay, no okay, audio. that's just what it is. Okay, wait, wait. audio is wait, wait, wait. Yeah. audio is back now. How how is it now? Yeah, it's good now. Okay, because Terry, there's something on. came up. Okay, Terry, carry on. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> I am really, really happy for being here with you. And for those who don't know me, I am Telojero from Mexico and citizen. Okay. Um, Stella, we, we, we may have to pause. Just pause. Pause for a moment. Your, your, We're losing. We still audience. have some problems. Yeah. Yeah, we. I think what we need to do now is change audio. John, if you could help us, Stella. We use Tyra's audio, the laptop audio, and we switch off the audio of yeah. Stella's phone. Do you think it might be uh, thinking it, it's background noise and it's cutting it out? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah. Try yeah. speaking to Terry. No, no, no. The sound is better? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Where was I? Well, there are, I, I like a lot of landscapes, cityscapes, because I am an, an architect. And what, as Stella said, we have many questions about uh, the use of our palette of colors. Thank you. Okay, so if I show you my, my palette, uh, my palette is, is basic. I, I have really, um, I use, I use a basic colors and I start from, from light to dark and from warm to, warm to cool. Stella? On my palette, I have Kansas. I enjoy very much the Kansas. Do, do you see, see them? Yeah, we do see it now. You see them? Yeah. Yes. I, I love the Kansas and it, depending how much you, um, 
dilute them, they, they could be very transparent or they are semi-transparent, but, but if you dilute them, they are pretty transparent. I have earthy, earthy colors that I have the, um, the light, uh, um, Sienna light. I love the Quanacodon, uh, Quaqua, I call it, but an orange, <laughs> and, uh, and red. So I, in, on my palette, I usually have warm and cool. That is the most important thing for me because I, I love to, um, to exchange the, the warm and, and always have the contrast of warm and, and cool. That is one of, of the most important thing for me about color. Is the temperature so i have yellow warm and cool as you you can notice i have a uh, hansa light and hansa medium which are for me quite huge difference i have the the reds mm -hmm. and i have the pyrol pyrolus um, orange and uh, carmine i use carmine which is is really um not only light and dark but also warm and cool I, I, greens, I like to mix them, but Daniel Smith has such beautiful greens that I have spring green, sap green, um, in viridian. And again, I, I love the viridian because it's, it's very cool. And of course, few of yellow, uh, of blues. I love the, the different uh, blues because they mix very well with yellows and they mix also with the greens. So I can cool the greens with with mixing with yellows. I have cerulean, I have, uh, um, um, oh, tell me what is this, the, 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 the cobalt teal blue and uh, cobalt blue, uh, ultramarine, and I have also um, uh, taylor, taylor blue green shade. So those are pretty basic colors that, that I enjoy very much. In between them, I can mis mix a lot of um, a lot of different colors, a lot of different hues between them, a lot of darks um, that I enjoy mixing. And, and lately, uh, I'm painting very dark. <laughs> it's, I've been in my dark period. But um, there are many different colors that I enjoy very much using. And we were, we were laughing about the pink. I, I love the Quanacodon pink. I love to paint a lot of flowers and I enjoy that color. Um, one mixture that we never talked about, uh, everybody knows, all my students know that I love cerulean. So one of my mixtures that I enjoy very much and nobody ever talked, I told Joan, I love to mix the cerulean <laughs> with, with red and they both are semi-transparent, but for shadows, the, the, the cerulean, the granulation in the red, I, I can make a lot of different, uh, and I will mix it here and show you a lot of uh, different here if I have the cerulean and if I mix it with red, it, it really, in, they're semi-transparent, but, but mixing them, uh, they make this kind of a shadow granulated, uh, color that I do believe is very, very pretty for, for shadow. You see, the, and if I, I usually, when I paint, I don't uh, uh, over mix them. I let them mix a lot on, on, on the palette. So for me, uh, this is, is really pretty shadow. It, it's kind of warm. And I don't know if the, the, really the camera picks it very well. It, does, it doesn't show very well. Uh, and uh, which and red the, are you using? Does it? It's cerulean with uh, with scarlet with um, pyrrole um, orange. I and I don't know if you see it very very well. And uh, it it doesn't. It it is kind of a warm gray, which I really enjoy for for doing shadows. That is something that I I mix in. It's a very unusual mix because they both are semi-transparent, but, but also the granulation is, is beautiful on, on them. Um, another, of course, another um, mixture that I enjoy very much is the ultramarine. Uh, ultramarine, that is, uh, that is how I will mix my, um, my uh, darks. 
uh, ultramarine with uh, quaqua burn orange, quanaquidon, and a touch of red. Between these three colors, I can make, you see, beautiful dark brown. If I put a little more red, it, it becomes beautiful, very dull, dark, rich red. And again, look at the camera. It doesn't, it doesn't really show that. Uh, and then if I put, uh, put more um, blue, it becomes very deep, gorgeous um, blue. So camera doesn't pick that very well. I don't know if, it, if I come close. It, it's really hard to very hard to see though. And it, uh, since I never uh, mix them too much, I not, don't over mix them on the, on the, um, in, in my palette, they show inside deep, the, um, all the colors come deep and I can go all the way to almost black, but, but still uh, in <laughs> with all the blacks we have, I love the darks to, to show colors. I always laugh at the doorways or windows. I like to show life behind the doors and the windows. I mean, people make love there. They get upset, they get happy. So I like to, to, to show there is life behind that. So when I mix my darks, I want them to be alive. So I do not like to over mix them. So those are, those are some of my favorite. And, Always, it's interesting how you you get your darks. The the uh, greens when when I have sub green, which is also semi transparent, and if I put in um, ultramarine is transparent. If I mix these two colors, I can get beautiful beautiful um, greens and um, in cool cool it up and warm it up. Uh, so that that is for me I'm always very much fun to to mix colors and get those mixtures and um, I like to to have movement in 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 the color not to be totally flat because for me especially the greens there are millions millions of greens it depends if I um, dilute it more it's still you can see the the blue and the green in in them. Um, so, do you have um, questions, guys? Hello. 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 Uh, what, what reds were you using? Pyrrhal orange. orange. Yeah, pyrrhal orange is one of my favorite red because it's fiery red. And I love red. I paint um, John and, and Catherine saw a lot of poppies around in Bulgaria. And, and now they know why, why I paint so many poppies. So, for my poppies, um, pyro orange is just the best color because it, it really glows, it's fiery red. Any questions, guys? Well, there is someone here, Stella, um, someone who wanted to know about your paper. My Where paper, you... this, is, this is Arches block. Yeah, but uh, uh, Wenda, Asks of the three types of paper called rough and hot press. Hot press. Uh, this is hot press. Uh, she says, which one do you use and why? Uh, or why not? Uh, and why not? I use cold press. Um, hot press is, is very slick and it's more technical, what I'm concerned. I paint very fast and spontaneous. So the, the cold press is really the, the most, um, it fits more my style of, of painting. I also love very much um, the, the rough one because it has it gives me a lot of texture. I don't I don't pay too much attention to do textures in my my paintings, but through the granulation, which I love the granulating color, through granulations, through the, the roughness of the paper, I can get the desired texture of, of my paintings. Thank and you. I, and I, I paint a lot of landscapes. Uh, I used to paint a lot of street scenes. And since I spent this long time in Bulgaria these days, I paint a lot of, of landscapes. So um, 
I, I like to have that that movement, granulation, and texture. Mm -hmm. okay, Hello. Good. Yes, Jan. Um, the green that you've got there is, is that undersea green or is it perylene green? I have undersea green. Undersea green is a little too too dark for me. So I, I prefer to use the sap green, the spring green. Uh, I also use uh, cascade green, which I love very much. Mm -hmm. And um, in viridian, so viridian give me the coolness. And again, I, I love the cool and warm. Um, undersea is, is very uh, deep, uh, dark green mm -hmm. for me. Caroline is even darker than that. And I use them, believe me. I, I have them all and I use them in different in different paintings. I always choose the, the colors that I show with you my basic palette. And then depending on what I use, the mood I am, I will put a few more colors that, that are particularly um, soothing for my for my subject. I, I tend to use things like perylene green and that undersea green to get a, a juicy dark area which, which green perylene green. Perylene. Perylene. yes yeah or, or, absolutely or, or, yes or the undersea green the, the both contribute to a very dark if you want to really dark dark that, that's the one to go for yes uh, I I uh, very much you um, mix Jan I use mix a lot of my colors on the paper and I, I do not paint totally wet and wet, which I, I do many times also, but I start um, wet and dry, wet brush with a lot of pigment and, and dry paper. But very soon after five minutes, my whole paper is, is wet and I paint wet and wet. So I layer uh, 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 colors in, in, into the wet paint. So if I, if I use any green, and I like to darken it, I can put um, uh, some blue in there. I love to mix the colors because I like to get a lot of dynamic in my painting. So the, the, putting them and letting them mix on the paper gives me a lot of movement in and, and life. I like my paintings to be alive. I don't like uh, flat. Uh, mm -hmm. in, don't understand me wrong. They're beautiful painting that's are very flat. That's a wonderful. It's just my style is different. I like to to have a lot of colors that mix on the paper and, and uh, give a lot of movement. The, Stella, the, from Stella, there's a question from Raffaele whether yeah. you use Stalo Green, Blue Shade, and Bordeaux. Bordeaux for yes, space. I do. I do, Raffaele, very much. And I love the, the, uh, the talos. You know, talos are, I am a little on the elephant side. I do not uh, paint very gently. And, and the talos are really overpowering. But I believe they make, and I showed only way, one way of my, making my darks, but I love to use the, the talos in, in to make darks because tables are very transparent. They are staining, but they are very transparent. They mix beautifully. And if you use the talo again with, with brown and put a little alizarin or a carmin, they make gorgeous blues. Again, I will use it the same way. I, I can make with that bluish dark and reddish dark, brownish dark, greenish dark. I, you know, for me, the darks mixing them, that's it. I love that. Uh, but yes, I definitely love to um, to use the talos. It's just many years, especially in the very beginning when I was a, many years ago, I stopped using them because very soon when I mix, because I mix a lot of the colors, very quickly they go to dark. And it looks like a hole on my painting. So I quit using them and now I'm using them more, more gentle. And I'm not very gentle when I paint. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cerulean uh, blue. Yes, I do have. Yes, right, right here. 
Do you want to, to pick into that? John, I have a little painting sure. of Poppy right there. Uh, somebody asked the question. Right. Uh, yeah, the cerulean blue, is it, is it cerulean or is it cerulean blue chrome? Uh, cerulean blue. That's a cerulean. What do you want me to show? Is it? Is it is there a John, John wanted me to show poppies. Uh -huh. Those are my poppies. Nice. Of color. Oh, my, my flowers. Yes, that's this. Um, this is uh, cyclamens. That that is the gentle painting I painted, isn't it? <laughs> yes, white. I just love cyclamens, and I grow with them, and I paint them. This this was my cyclamens. Unfortunately, it died this winter when I was not here. But I will grow it again. Uh, I'm sorry, Anne. You asked something, darling. Um. Yeah, sure. Uh, you said you use cerulean blue. The I love cerulean blue. blue. Yes, uh, the cerulean blue blue chrome in there. Uh, uh, I have them all cerulean's because uh, for me, and that is the eternal uh, discussion about cerulean. For me, cerulean is cool because mm. it goes more towards white. And so I love cerulean because I use it for my for my uh, skies. I use it in in greenery a lot, um, and and um, it's one of my favorite colors. I I love cerulean. Use it a lot. Is there a reason why that you use one over the other? I choose the one that is the coolest. Right. And I, I think just the regular cerulean is the coolest from them. I mean, it's really funny how every, everybody feels about that. In this is, we had a big discussion on how our eyes work because everybody sees the color differently. If I say this is this cerulean is very cool for me and some, somebody, a lot of my students says, no, this is this, the chrome is cooler. And it depends how our eyes, it's how we see it. Yeah. Been... It, it sometimes as well, it, it, it's the color that's next to it as well that makes of you see that color differently. Of course, so, you, you compare what you put it next to. Yes, yeah. exactly. And for me, that is very important part of my painting to put that, to, do, to use that contrast between, between cool and warm. So what is your favorite subject matter? Ah, it, it changes, yeah, and I don't have, it, mm -hmm. it's however and whatever I feel at the moment. I'm a very emotional painter, so um, I can never say what I'm going to paint tomorrow because whatever strikes me tomorrow and I wake up, that's what I paint. But I really, the last few years when I'm spending so much time in Bulgaria, I paint sheep and I paint a lot of, of greenery and flowers, boats. But yes, I would say, I admit, I am very partial to boats. I love boats. <laughs> Do you paint outdoors? Yes, I love to paint. This is one of my very favorite things because when you're outside, you take it with all your senses. You see it, you hear it, you feel it. it it's to be in there, for me, it's incredibly exciting. When you paint outdoors, how do you stop yourself from being oversensed with all the information that's coming into your mind? Ah, that is a good question. That, I don't believe anything teaches you more than being outside about design mm -hmm. and about colors, about shape. For me, nature is the greatest teacher because you sit out there and I love it all and I want to have and this and this and this all here, mm -hmm. but you have to learn to be selective. So a lot I do, I do like this, and I, I'm looking and I'm looking what I like. And there are tons of, you know, I use um, also from old negatives, you know, mm -hmm. the old negatives, those little things. And I go like this and I choose the area. So you, you have to learn to be very selective. It teaches you a lot, Jan. And nothing teaches you more 
than painting outside, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because for me, shape and color are very important. And outside, to I had a teacher uh, who told me, you have to learn to see black and white values, mm -hmm. values and shapes. To see black and white, sit outside and make yourself see it in shape in black and white is incredibly um, um, important and, and helpful. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So if you can, don't have more questions towards me, I would love to come around here. Well, Terry's preparing. Um, just want to share a uh comment or this more like yes from Christine. Christine says thank you for the advice on colors and mixing it's something i'm just learning now so it's a big help for her where's the camera can you see the paintings here i will put it on spotlight terry oh, okay let's get my palette out of here I think we have a question. Um, Valentina, did you just raise your hand? Hi. Hey. Hi, Stella. Hi, Stella. I'm Valentina Francescon from Italy. Hi, we met at Bologna. Oh, hi. hi thank you, you very much for being here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> Well, I'd like to, to, to do a question to you. I'd like to know, to know if you sketch before painting. You do some sketch? Oh, yes. Um, I do a lot of sketches. And when I paint, I do sketches. I do a lot of drawing, but drawing, it's a separate part. When I, when I uh, paint, I do a very fast sketch. I just give myself guidance and more tell my brain what i'm doing in 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 the shapes the form uh but if you're talking about sketches in my studio if i paint in my studio especially from photographs i always do a thumbnail because it it i want in that little thumbnail to put just few shapes and few values that gives me a direction of what i'm doing okay Thank you a lot. Thank sure. you a lot Good Stella. to see you. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. This is. <laughs> well, I want to show you my book, my work because I want to see you my palette in there. And then I will show you my palette. As I told you before, I like landscapes and cityscapes. The these uh, daily scenes has got my eye and my heart. So here's one of them. You can see it. It is Spain, and what I like to paint in cityscapes is the perspective. So you can uh, you can have a certain view of the place where I has been, and you can see the perspective in the streets. And for that, I like to use. It's a shame that the color cannot be taught by the camera, but I like to do some sketches. This is a sketch. This is ink and watercolor, you can see it here. And this is a watercolor. This is also another one. Let me put away to avoid the shadows. And this is another one. All these watercolors has very bright colors because in my country, the colors are really vivid. I mean, you can feel them in, in the people, in the costumes, in the cities, on the streets and the buildings. So I am like that. But also, I like to work the values of the watercolors. And here, you can mm -hmm. see a watercolor just made with uh, quinacridone and burnt mm -hmm. orange just to work the values of the place in China. I like to work also with sketches. Almost all my watercolors has a sketch. And I'm gonna show you, this is a sketch. 
this was on the street in a bus and I could see this, uh, the cityscape on the reflection on, on, on the, the car. Best, the this is the, the, the sketch, but I have a big one, a uh, big watercolor with this uh, subject. And of course, you can see also here, uh, Mexico City, Mexico City. I'm gonna talk about my palette uh, after this, and I'm gonna show you some sketches. This is just a studio, just my imagination, trying to work with the, the colors and in a, in a paper that has no texture. So I had to do some, uh, some things with the brushes to provoke this uh, texture on, on the painting. And also this, as I told you, a landscape, trying to simplify everything and just to leave the main subject, the tram here in Praga. The other things are just uh, <coughs> uh, collateral, I mean, but without them, you cannot bring uh, to the front the subject that is the tram. And the last one that I have here, I oh, know I have another one, is Valle de Bravo. Uh, magical, we call that the, the very typical uh, towns in Mexico, Valle de Bravo. And this is a daily scene there because uh, all the people are in the main square, in the church, go, and the market is just behind us. And they are coming and uh, wandering around. And this is very a very nice place. And the last one is a house, a house that is considered uh, how you say heritage, heritage. of uh, humanity and okay. got an award just recently uh -huh, yeah <laughs> got an award recently well okay as i told you i work always a sketch i can i cannot work with other sketches because uh because they are the the main reason for me for for my landscape or cityscape there i can see where the shadows what colors i can use if i take in or take out some elements persons and and etc and as you see i use uh brightest colors in this uh, uh sketch sketchbook because uh, the paper is not the same paper that we are painting on, so they need more, more colors in here. So now talking about my palette, let me return here. As a Stella, I can use many, many colors, but uh, I have my favorites, and my favorites are Pearl, red, pearl orange, and then this is, I don't remember the name of uh, orange. Vermilion, uh, vermilion, is it? No, 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 no. Orange? This is orange. Uh, uh, don't remember now. Uh, uh, but I, I have many in here, and I only use those that I'm going to mention. I also have here a very important color for me, the marsh yellow, that I mix with other colors to get some, some, uh, textures that I like. And also the Perilene Maroon is very important for me. As I told you before, the Kinacridone uh, burnt orange is important okay. for me. And the sepia. Sepia yeah. is something that I am using always. Uh, here in the, in the blues, I have my favorites. And my favorite one is the French Ultramarine. Is a color that I always need to have because I mix it with everything. Uh, but after uh, uh, French ultramarine, cobalt blue, and also uh, talo turquoise. Uh, John, help me. Talo turquoise. Uh, the new one. Talo turquoise. Yeah, talo turquoise. And also talo green. Uh, I also have this green, the the green that that mentioned Estella, the spring green, the spring green. and I used uh, the neutral tint and the, uh, what was it, violet, violet, uh, dark, shadow, 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 the, violet, the violet shadow, shadow, shadow. shadow, shadow violet, blue. indigo and uh, 
in a in Dradone in I don't know the names in English, so that's why I'm struggling. In that room blue. In that room blue. Uh, in, in greens, I only have the perilene, the spring, the hookers. Uh, but the hookers mainly, yeah. yeah. But the, but the, the mainly colors I use are the spring and the perilene, and then I mix them uh, with blues or with yellows or yeah, or too. also with the uh, trinacridone yeah. or browns to get other other colors in there. I'm going to bring my paper here. Where is it? <laughs> have you seen it? Do you have it? It's one of these shorts? It's, no, it's here. This okay. paper is Hannah Mullet, the collection. Uh, Ross, cold press, 300 gram. And uh, uh, a ref or a cold press? Huh? A ref or a cold press? Which cold one? press. Cold press. Yeah, I'm going to use your water. Yeah, yeah, I may just yes. clean for you. And I'm going to show you one of the mixes that I like the best. So here I have the Mars yellow and the Mayan red. Mayan red. I, yeah. I, I and it, but I even here know you have a, a pink, some, some kind of pink. But this is the, the mix. Now, I'm going to have the French ultramarine, quite dirty here. Terry, can you please yeah. move your paper a little bit to your right, just a little bit to your so that it'll be in the middle of the frame. Yeah, thank you. And it's okay. called the it's called the brushes, guys. Yeah, also. <laughs> so you have here the French ultramarine, but now I'm going to add to this mix, the other one. Yeah, that's a great spell, yeah. So you can have here, but this looks this. And if you add to this, the Perilene Maroon, can you see? It's a shame that that the camera doesn't show. It doesn't show, yes. You how, wouldn't believe how, how, how the beautiful colors. those colors are. Yeah. The Let me try. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah, when you lift it up, it's a lot easier. A lot it's better. really hard, hard, it's really to, see hard to see. They're it. beautiful colors. We can yeah. have the camera be brought of... down a tiny bit. Um, Terry, it's OK. I we can actually have these swatches like Stella's also shared in on our social media account. Okay. Yeah. And also other mix that I love I love to do is uh Talo Turquoise. Turquoise? Hmm? Talo turquoise. Talo turquoise. That's beautiful color. Yes. It's a beautiful color. Beautiful color. And it's more beautiful when you mix it with, with Talo green. green. Oh, striking. Water. That could be water. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You see? And if you uh, add in the Tron Blue, you have this for water. Gorgeous. But if you want <laughs> to add something like this for the water, see? Beautiful, beautiful colors. Oh yeah. gosh, too bad the camera doesn't show. Oh, it does. You see, yeah. you see them there. Pretty and well. now, if you want, if, if you want to work with uh, greenery, as I told you, I like hookers. I haven't used hookers for a long time. So I like this, but then I also mix it with the spring. And I'm going to use yours. Eddie, what was the other green? 
uh, this is spring green and the oh, other perilene. one, uh, perilene green. Oh, perilene. Yeah. And then also I like to use or to add to my greens, the titanium. Mm. Yeah. And you have change. It looks like the linen trees that we yeah. know today. Mm -hmm. I guess you uh, mix mostly on the paper directly. Uh, no, I mostly uh, make the mixes on my palette. But right now I want to show you how I mix the colors and how they look like after that. But you don't over mix them in the past. Uh, sometimes, yes, that depends on the painting. But because uh, this color, the Mars, the Mars yellow that I really love. I do the, the mix here, the mix here in my palette. Can you see it? Here's the Mars and the Mayan red. And I apply it here. Let's apply it just uh, here. Yes, and in here, in my palette, I have here the sepia and the perlene green. If I want this green to be warm, I add the sepia. If I want this green to be cold, I add the indentron. Indentron. In indentron. Indent indentron. Mm -hmm. Can you see? No, it's frozen. It'll come back. The, the video is frozen. Yeah. But, uh, we can hear you. Because you, you move too much. It's, is, is there? Oh, no, yeah, there's yeah, something, something there. Is, it says gadget. Oh. oh. No, I didn't touch it. No. Wait, wait, it, it will come back. Yeah, let's see if it comes back. You back. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is back. Is it back? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, okay, now it's. Oh, oh dear. Uh -oh. <laughs> it, it's just try to go back in. It's getting connected. Can you hear us? But it's yeah. on the phone. We do. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, there we go. There you go. Yeah, it is there. There, I saw you move. Let's see if. Put, put it in there. Now you're on that. You're on another camera now. No, mm. you're on this. You're on, yeah. this, you're on this camera. Yeah, here it is. I see it. Ethel, can you move the screen? Yeah, I'm trying to spot the. Oh, okay. Oh, but so, but it's still, still vertical. Yeah, okay, well, vertical now. I, I, I hate doing this. <laughs> but, how about, how about can, you hold, can you just hold? Can you hold? Just hold the camera. I'll pull this. I'll pull, like this. Well, I'll pull this apart. No, this will drop. Here, here, here. Oops. Okay. And uh, look what it says now. We have to. You have to. Yeah. Right. Technical problems. Okay. Is that now? Okay. No, and John is trying to solve them. Yeah. 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 More. Just a little. A little more to the left. There. Okay. okay. Um, no, it's not that. Much. Can yeah, you see that now? Vertical. Yeah, still. It's still vertical. Now we get to move. No, the cameras cannot and flip around. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. 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 There, there you go. Okay. There we go. The mix is made here in the palette. If I want a very uh, deep green but cold, I mix the the. What was the name? No, no, and the perilene, the perilene yeah. green with indatron. Or if I want to be uh, warmer, I mix the perilene green with sepia, sepia, or maybe sometimes with Van Dyke. That depends on the on the painting. And I also like to do to use the um, not remembering the name, 
<laughs> yeah. Let me see. Let me see. But you are going to tell me because you know this this color too well. The buff titanium. Buff titanium. Yeah. <laughs> buff titanium. Buff or no? <laughs> buff titanium. Look. Buff. <laughs> love it. Yes, I love to use this on sepia on greens because this helps me to give um, to give some kind of textures to the to the colors that are very dark for me because as you have seen in my watercolors I I don't use very very dark colors. You're not in your dark period. No. <laughs> 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 Just call it mucky white. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there is uh, a question until now. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. What was the uh, reddish brown color that you used for the monochromatic painting you had shown for an example? Crunacridone, crunacridone uh, burnt orange. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I like to use that color for all my monochromatic paintings and also the French ultramarine. That's uh, these are the two colors that I use for monochromatic. I have been trying others uh, like the tallow blue or the green blue or uh, some the pale and maroon, but I I prefer these two. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, plastic palette or um, metal palette or porcelain, which one do you prefer to use? Uh, plastic. Or what? Plastic palette or porcelain palette? I I Made love up. porcelain pl uh, uh, palette, but uh, you cannot take it all all the way. I mean, mm -hmm. to plein air because I I paint a lot plein air. I do my sketches uh, plein air. So if you have porcelain, you it is not that easy to to carry to handle. So that's why I use plastic palette. <laughs> but this is metal. And plastic. No, this is plastic. I don't like metal. And that's right. I don't I like thought, metal. I thought you were a plastic palette. Uh, yeah, I have a plastic palette. I find it, it works a bit better with a plastic palette. Yeah, it stains a lot, but um, it, I, I feel it has a better, it has a better feel. I don't know why. Just how I feel that. Tell well, them about the, the ground. Tell them uh, about okay. the ground. You know, I have been trying, well, I have been working with uh, uh, the sticks and also the ground. Uh, in my country, there, uh, there was, because he passed away, an artist, Francisco Toledo, who used to paint on kites. So there was a tribute uh, last year, yeah, last year for him, and all the painters should paint on a kite. But this guy uh, was made of recycled paper. So the recycled paper is not good for watercolor. You, the, the, the paper uh, fell apart or, and you cannot work with it. So I tried with the ground. I'm going to put this here. Okay. Um, no, I'm going to put it like this. This was the result. Oh, again, frozen. Um, okay, it's really here, yeah. yeah, you yeah. can see it. So the result was that I was the only artist for this tribute that could use watercolor because others, when they saw that the, the water uh, destroyed the paper, they didn't use it. So with the ground, the watercolor was apply, applied like in a common paper, watercolor paper, I mean, Arches, Sanders, uh, or every, every other. And since then, I have been using this ground to work with papers that are handmade and are not made for watercolor. And this has been a really nice experience. Regarding the sticks, I also always use the sticks, French ultram ultramarine, for my sketches, because that allowed me to use, to give a values 
to use it as a pencil or to use uh, them with a brush, just applying water for take the color as a, in a normal or a standard watercolor. Mm -hmm. Terry, there, earlier there's a question from Wenda. Uh, when you talk about sketch, do you mean watercolor studies or pencil sketch? Uh, ink sketches, watercolor sketches, and mix. Let me show you where is my, uh, here, you can see. Uh, this is watercolor and ink a sketch of uh, a church in, in, in Mexico. And I apply the watercolor. And after that, I started to make all the ink drawing. As you can see, the ink started to melt with the color. And that's why we have these darks on some parts of the watercolor. Uh, in this, I was trying to to, to do this yellow, but when I started to add shadows, it becomes greenish. And then I only add the ink to it. But I want to show you this one. This one is with the orange, Kinacridone orange burn, uh, orange, burnt orange, yeah? Yeah, I applied first, no, I did the drawing first with ink. And then when it was completely dry, I applied the color with a, with a brush. Uh, the ink always, when you apply it and the paper is wet, is going to leave dark uh, spots. And, but if it is dry, you can handle it, trying not to have these spots. That depends on what you really like. But these are all with watercolor and ink. There are some that are made only, only with ink, like this one of Santa Monica, made in the place. All of them are uh, plein air on site. But as you can see, I use a lot of ink, more than pencil. And uh, I, I don't have here my, my samples of the watercolor sketches with the sticks because they are, uh, you can you can not use the ink, but just using the stick as pencil and it works really well. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about uh, using uh, a sepia ink? Uh, yes. when you're working around yellow because yeah. most most black ink are based around a very very dark blue and that's mm -hmm. when you're going to get your yellow mixing with your blue which makes that green color yes that's right but uh, let me tell you if you do the mix in your palette uh, this is not going to happen or if you, the, the paper is wet, at, uh, at least what I, I am doing, if it is wet on your palette and you apply the uh, Indatrone or the French Ultramarine and then the Sepia, it is going to be a very, very dark uh, brown. Yeah, it, it yeah, neutralizes, it, it gets yeah. to... And uh, if, if you have seen, I, I use a uh, neutral tint, but not all the time. Mm, most of my dark colors are sepia with uh, French ultramarine or with uh, uh, Perlene maroon. Mm -hmm. When do you know to use other mixed medias in your watercolor? When? When? Uh, that depends uh, on, on the scenery. If the scenery has a lot of elements and uh, maybe the transparency is not the, the, the best uh, mean to, to, to give that information in my painting, then I uh, decide to use uh, mixed media. Mm -hmm. Right. Things that you can't normally do um, with watercolor easily. Uh, I didn't understand. Please help me, Stella. Uh, getting those details in. Uh, ah, those uh, details here are with ink because yeah. it is a sketch and it is easier to use the ink. Uh, yeah. But when I uh, uh, 
work with a watercolor, like in here. I wait for the, the watercolor to get dry. Mm -hmm. Wait, I'm going to show you. And I apply all details in dry, like mm -hmm. in here, in watercolor. Do, do you ever um, water down your ink to tone it back a bit? Mm -hmm. Angela, help me. Si alguna vez lo aguas un poco la tinta, le pones más agua para que quede más aguada. No, what I do is to wet the paper and apply the ink on wet paper. And so the ink can help me to, to work without, uh, uh, without wetting the, the, the ink apart. I also work with walnut ink. And uh, these, uh, these are very, very, uh, lovely works because sometimes the, the way I work it, uh, sometimes they think it's watercolor. It wa is watercolor uh, work with uh, Van, Dyke uh, Van Dyke Brown, and it is not. It is uh, walnut ink, and I like to apply it sometimes with my finger or with the goose, uh, with the goose. Uh, yeah, uh huh. The, the tails with the with the goose uh, thing. Yeah. And uh, when I want to, to do uh, bigger spots with my fingers. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to thank everybody for joining Friday and certainly our, our two artists. So Terry and Stella, thank you so much. You, you, I'm certainly you guessed that Terry is an architect. Um, <laughs> she does just beautiful. We do, we do. Work. We can guess that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And Stella is just spontaneous. It's just, it's wonderful being with both of them in the studio. So with that, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining Friday. And we'll see you next week. Can thank you, you, can you, you change the... Thank you, John. You're welcome, Gabriel. Thank you. We thank love you. you. Have fun. Enjoy you, playing. Okay.